Chairman, Vice Deputy Minister, several uh, governor from many provinces also here, from Krabi, I see, member of the media, ladies and gentlemen, so I up again. On behalf of Thai Tourism Ministry, I would like to thank all of you joining us today, particularly the local buyers, for their long-standing cooperation. It is always a pleasure to be at the ITB Berlin. We are all benefit enormously from this massive annual gathering event of ideas, experience, intellect, and products. Like the success of ITB Berlin, the Thai tourism industry is also enjoying great success. We recorded 35 million visitors last Christmas, an all-time high and this year we are reaching 36 million visitors, which is an increase of 4% and 51 billion euros in tourism revenue from international visitors alone. This is an increase of 8% as generating growth will no longer be a problem in the years ahead. We now focus a lot more emphasis on sustainable tourism. I quote sustainable tourism. Less than two months ago in January, Thailand has successfully hosted the ASEAN Tourism Forum. Well, ASEAN is unique in its own way. So bringing them all together once a year under one roof is a unique showcasing and networking opportunity. Each of us, each of us are growing and growing. But it is the combined power of these individual policies, especially those related to facilitation and connectivity that make ASEAN such a popular and rapidly growing destination. As an example, recently a group of vintage cars participate in a caravan through ASEAN countries starting from down south of Singapore, Malaysia, and drive around in Thailand and ending up the trip in Vietnam. So participants are drivers from the UK, from Australia, some from the United States, a few local ASEAN drivers, and quite a few from European countries. This helped advance the course of ASEAN connectivity and integration. The participants were able to drive for themselves the high quality of highways and roads to the extent that they could even drive their vintage car. One of the promising emerging tourism segments in Thailand I would like to mention this time around is Buddhist tourism not only draws newcomers to, from international to Thailand, but also into ASEAN and boosts its intra-travel and contributes significantly to the local economy. Well, according to the UNESCO, 60% of the world's population practice religion, and these believers from the demographic base make an estimate 600 million national and international spiritual trips worldwide, of which half of them happening in Asia. To tap this opportunity, I plan to develop connecting routes for those who are interested in Buddhism, either for philosophers, pilgrimage, shrine visits, or faith-based. This will include for those people who are interested in meditation, as well as those who are keen to learn more about the cultural and historical aspect of Buddhism, such as Buddhism arts, Buddhist architecture, and Buddhist way of life. Well-known Buddhist destinations in Thailand are around Bangkok, Sukhothai, Ayutthaya, or up north in Lanna area, in the Mekong or northeastern area of Thailand, or in down south Nakhon Si Thammarat. Many have been recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site. We offer a large number of places, ranging from temples and meditation centers to art galleries and archaeological spots. Ladies and gentlemen, the overarching goal is to position Thailand as a preferred destination that offers quality products and services. 
As minister myself, I would like to emphasize further tourism promotion to local communities because this will ensure a fairer distribution of tourism income, especially for people in the village. Because when local communities grow, the countries grow. With travel and tourism are now widely recognized as a major contributor to grassroots economies and income distribution, we are now taking measures to ensure that the benefits are better distributed across the entire nation. Let me share with you my real local experience during my New Year holiday. I decided to join our dear tourists at an elephant camp in Ta province up north, where I bathed and gave mud spa to the elephants. I also fry omelette from the methane gas generated from the elephant dung. Some could joke about this as another kind of gastronomy tourism, but for me, it is a carbon footprint management and also an inspection trip of sort to see that the elephants are being well taken care of. The biggest challenge is making a long-lasting impression on travelers to the kingdom. We are building a truly sustainable tourism industry. We are now in a new era of tourism in which managing growth will become our overarching priority. On the infrastructure investment, the government has agreed to invest in building high-speed train connecting three airports of Suwannapum, Don Muang, and Utapau Pattaya. And yet, another high-speed train will be built from Bangkok to Hua Hin. And we are expanding all railroads in country to double tracks, which make train tourism will become even more fascinating besides being able to connect to the international rail from China. The government is also launching several other projects to improve tourism service and safety. For, for instance, improve roads to tourist sites, training tourism and security personnel, building more ramps, and developing niche tourism to go to museums, visit well-kept gigantic trees, either found in the nature, found in community care, or found in temples. This will also be in line with our concept of tourism for all, promoting universal accessibility, aimed at encouraging universal design, catering to the different group of travelers. We recognize the importance of promoting equal access and have been a keen advocate of this concept over the past several years as former Secretary General for the Thai People with Disability Development Foundation. Last month, I had the opportunity to send off a big group of visually impaired travelers returning from the UK. I enjoy learning about their experiences. They all love Thailand, enjoy our tasty food. It can be more spicy, that's what they said. They also said, to my surprise, they felt local friendly people. I asked, how did you know that? They said they could feel the hustle and the bustle in most of the cities they have visited, from north to south, from highland to the ocean, but they always feel safe and secure. Many of them told me that their best memory is playing with the elephants. The rough skins with very gentle elephants made them feel happy. Some even said they want to return to Thailand to hug the elephants once again and again. Some elephants kissed them all over, and they felt a cradle of nature and start kissing back. These special guests saw our authenticity experience, our warm welcome and natural hospitality. This is why we have been called the land of smile. Even the visually impaired can become aware of our smile from the heart. We love to receive more senior travelers, families with toddlers, families with children, and even rehabilitation patients. Also in January this year, I attend the Upcycling the Ocean 
pick up the trash, especially from the beach and from the ocean at the world famous Patong Beach. To be a part of this activity, many foreigner volunteers help the local clean the coastline of the Andaman Sea. And now we have enforced regulation prohibiting smoking at the front beach so that the sea breeze will be rain, remain fresh as it should. We aim not only transforming plastic debris found in the ocean to reprocess, make fashionable fabric, but also raise awareness to everyone to preserve the kingdom's coastal areas. Let me review a bit about Bangkok. A new attraction in Bangkok, the Icon Siam, will be a new innovation luxury landmark on the Chapaya River that show us this year how the community can be combined together with a shopping complex. The Icon Siam also invests its own Golden Line SkyTrain to connect to the existing SkyTrain BTS in Bangkok. And by the way, one more underground line is to be operational in Bangkok this year, and at least one more every year for the next five years. We are also cooperating with the Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Natural Resources to create a newer dimension of tourism with a landmark project for tree and nature lovers. As well as bird watchers, many trees aged more than 100 years old can be found throughout the country. They also have folklore stories associated with them we start inviting everyone to visit the heritage of trees in Thailand now. Besides, we also have a plan to promote restaurants and market aged over 100 years old that still exist throughout the country. The visitors will be able to experience the good old days with the unique local experience. The measures will support the Go Local campaign this is a landmark project to promote the kingdom's emerging generation of lesser visit destinations, better balance the tourist arrival between urban and rural areas. Now I'll take you to the upcoming events in Thailand this year. The annual World Wai Kru Muay Thai ceremony is scheduled to take place on next weekend in Ayutthaya Historical Park. In October, the MotoGP World Championship Thailand is set to get started in Burinam Circuit. And then another art activity of Art Biennale in Krabi, the national initiative of contemporary art to be held from November until February next year. This is for the first time. And we have done some successful, amazing Thailand marathon run in Bangkok, and it will be held again in January next year in 2019. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the global travel and tourism industry is at a crossroad. In future, technology will revolutionize our booking systems and transportation networks. But something will never change, and that is the need to ensure sustainability and responsible tourism. So once more, thank you for being here and thank you for your friendship and support. It has been a real pleasure to be with you today. Thank you and Swadikrab.